Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's more Vikings. Which one, Dan? This is episode seven, Paris. Paris. I guess that's where we're going. Sounds like it. All right. Previously, we lost Athelstan. And we lost the farm in Wessex. Yes, we did. Lots of treachery from both sides there for different reasons. Undoubtedly going to be a reckoning for some people coming up soon. I expect that. Skull fam, let's go find out. Oh my. Does he know? He's got to know. Well, at least suspect. Loki's not exactly hiding it. <laughs> no. Look either. He's probably looking at that cross on his neck. Oh! We're, we're there. Well, that took no time. And they brought a freaking force with them, too. Yeah, they did. Damn. They brought Helga, too, for some and reason. And this freaking guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess you do need him. <laughs> now that Athelstan's not there to give you military advice. Right. I guess he's the only thing you got. Oh. Somebody's seen into the dragon. That must make your private time really difficult. <laughs> what is a big flea? This river's got currents to it. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. I guess they decided not to do that. It is still not too late for you to leave the city. Many here would urge you to save yourself. Allow me a moment to reflect, Count Odo. Yeah, you know he's always thinking about just saving his own ass. <laughs> That's what half these guys do. You must tell Count Odo that you have no intention of abandoning your people. You will stay with them. Protect them. I'm sure, Father, that that was always your intention. Be a man. Yes. <laughs> I am determined not to quit the city. Not in its most urgent hour of need. I see it in your eyes. You're afraid to do that. Mm-hmm. I pray to God Almighty that not one of us is found wanting in either courage or belief. Is that her speech? <laughs> Probably. Could have swore I saw her speaking it out. But I must ask your highness if you have appealed to your brother, the Eastern Emperor, for help. I will not ask either of my brothers for help. That's arrogant. Yeah, save your people. Defeat them, and I will be seen as a worthy successor to my grandfather, to the great Charlemagne. You don't seem like a worthy successor to me. If your daughter's telling you how to lead, you, yeah. you know. Coming in for a closer look? Probably. I say there's some massive walls, though. Good lord, they really are, aren't they? Oh yeah, no reconnaissance. Well, certainly not that damn close. Forgive me, but how is your marriage? It's a marriage. <laughs> oh, that's an answer. I try hard to forgive, as our Lord requires us to do, even those who trespass against us. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, because you didn't cut her ear off and trespass against her? <laughs> okay. Judith is King Ayla's daughter. What would she think if we decided to overthrow him? Mm. <laughs> Maybe she won't be happy. Do you plan to invade? Not initially. I have certain plans in place, including perhaps assassination. Such a casual conversation. <laughs> I know. Come here, Alfred. Come to your grandfather. Nice hairdo, Judith. <laughs> I don't blame you. Mm-hmm. I wonder how he is. Who? Hey. Athelstan. Why must you forever bring him to mind? It reminds me how my wife whored with him. Jesus. This is between me and this Jezebel. This harlot! <laughs> what an angry little boy he is. Leave. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to suffer for that and just divorce. Yeah, but, that, that's the easy solution. Oh, wait. Ninth century. Yeah, sorry. they don't believe in that. You wanted to talk to me like that? I miss him. Athelstan. I wish he was here with us. He would have been useful. We would manage without him. Guess we don't have a choice now. Nope. We have no choice now. Nah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, Father, forgive me. Tell me that's not. Oh, God. <laughs> Gotta get that rage under control. Most princes are getting laid. <laughs> You're in here beating yourself up. Who is this? You sent nobles with Queen Quentrith to look after our interests in Mercia. Oh, come on. Don't tell me she's already lost control. What happened to you? The Queen repudiated the contract she signed with us. Ha ha ha, she betrayed Egbert. She tried to kill all of us that were sent to safeguard the interests of Wessex. Well, that's not a smart thing to do. No, but it is a wrench in her, in his hands. Or his plans, I should say. I want you to be in command of this raid. Me? Sit, sit. Ragnar, are you setting him up? It sounds like it. And Floki just doesn't know any better? It's like, I don't know how to lead. The king, my oldest friend, has asked me to take command. 
But it was like, really? We suggest a plan. To mount simultaneous attacks both from the water and from the land. I will lead an assault on the tower and the gates of the city. We will attack the gates together. I said I would lead the assault. I trust old Kalf to make it. I don't think you were listening. <laughs> this is going well. Yeah. You'll be responsible for constructing whatever it is we need to scale these walls. <laughs> well, don't you worry about me, Ronald. I will make something truly astonishing. Just wait and see. Yes, let's wait and see. Let's hope the gods bless your efforts. <laughs> Oh, Floki, I see you're back to your old self. Mm-hmm. Is this like a baptism? I mean, she does have a newborn. Mm-hmm. Please take her. Take my baby. What are you talking about? I want her to be like your sons. I want her to be Viking. You are a Viking. Yeah. We'll be much happier and better off without me. You are really defeated after that. Mm-hmm. So what I believe, it is a very selfish thing to believe. I cannot help it. You get injured in one battle and suddenly you just fall to pieces. Shit happens. <laughs> That's best war. Even Ragnar takes injuries. Yeah. You don't appear to be learning from it. You must go to Mercia and persuade Queen Quinthrith that her interests and ours are one and the same. She has killed six of our nobles. Yes. <laughs> Eh. That is certainly unfortunate. I can make I can make new nobles. I don't know. What kind of a world do we live in when the friends of our friends kill our friends? <laughs> yes, indeed. What kind of world is that, Egbert? The kind you live in. She may be forgiven for slaughtering our nobles, but only if she begs mercy. If not, we will show her the iron fist. Her limbs being fastened to four horses, her body will be torn apart. Good God. I believe you do it, though. Yeah. Or something of that sort. <laughs> but also tell her that we have a repugnance for such measures, being Christians. Yeah, sure you do. This is the man who cut off a woman's ear in front of everybody. Oh. Tovi, I should have spoken before. It doesn't matter. I am not with child. Neither am I a child. I took advantage. So did I. Yeah, yep. so you're fine. She's a cradle robber. You know what? She is, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, she is. Wasn't he, like, that big? <laughs> this is for you. Good lord, I didn't even think about that. She doesn't look like she's aged at all. I'll say that. No, she hasn't. That's a lot of these women don't age. Let me see. No. You're hurting me. <laughs> it's far too good for you. Oh. Damn. Bully. I said to have my whole family killed by Ragnar. Oh, wait, yeah, I did. She should have said that. <laughs> they still didn't let my dad get here. <laughs> we must expect an attack any day now. Gisla, I regret not sending you to safety in time. There is nowhere I would rather be than here in Paris beside you. Put a crossbow in her hand and let's go. You may rely upon me to do everything possible to persuade the people of our ultimate victory. Yet it is for my father to lead us to that victory. Is it not, father? Oh, mm, yeah. I abdicate. <laughs> I must to bed. I am tired. <laughs> Off to pray. <laughs> the bed. Yeah. For God's sake. B but I am glad that I have placed my faith in you, Count Odo. <laughs> because if you don't do it, <laughs> <laughs> my daughter will. Oh, no. <laughs> you once refused my offer of marriage. And my hope is that once I have successfully managed the defense of Paris and the defeat of the Northmen, you will look again at my proposal. Look again or accept it? If you save Paris, I will forever be in your debt. But your first duty, Count Odo, is to concentrate on the defeat of the Northmen. Yes. Get married later. Of course, you're old enough to be her dad, but you know. Well, Torv is old enough to be Bjorn's mom, too, apparently, so... Mor morality is a... It's a bendy road in this mm -hmm. ninth century. My inventions will allow us to enter Paris. Our warriors will storm the walls, and we will all win the greatest renown. Jesus, chill out, Floki. Do you know why they are helping me, Helga? It's because I gave them a great sacrifice. Do you know what I did, Helga? Do you know what I did? Well, don't tell her. I killed Atherston. <laughs> You're crazy, Floki. Yeah, everybody can see it. When your own wife's afraid of you, that's not good. No, and you've made her afraid of you more than once. You spoke before in the baths of the Romans. Most of our people know nothing about them. I still know very little. I have some words here from the Romans themselves. Athelstan helped me to translate them. Athelstan? Yes, wouldn't you know it? He speaks other languages. Mm. 
Shere nefas quem mihi quem tibi finum. We may never know, Lukanawi, what the gods plan for you and me. I see a little silhouette of a man. <laughs> Skadamush, Skadamush, will you do the fandango? Ah, oh, friggin' Romans. Yeah. <laughs> Don't trust tomorrow's bow for fruit. Pluck this here now. Are you seducing your own stepdaughter? Oh, yeah. As long as there is breath in my body, I will protect you and your son, Alfred. Believe me. You mutilated her. Say, where do you want to get my ear cut off? This guy. Does he hate his son? I guess so. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> well, Lagatha was right. He's all about himself. He don't care about anyone else. Not even his own family. Jeesh. <laughs> what am I hearing? You know what you're hearing. All right. She's making him wait. Hmm. While well, he has to listen to that. <laughs> How long have you been waiting? <laughs> Do forgive me for keeping you waiting. I was bathing. <laughs> yeah. May I offer you a cup of wine? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you first. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I still wouldn't trust anything she handed me. I'm quite happy to discuss these matters further. My father insists that you not my agree. Father, how old are you? Do you always do what your father tells you? Don't you have your own thoughts and your own feelings? You know what? She, I point. she does, but I wouldn't take advice from her still. Yeah. I wonder what your father threatened to do to me. Did he want to tear me apart? Violate me? No. <laughs> All of the above. Whip me? Like to whip me. She knows how to get inside his skin. Come to my bed. <laughs> you're gonna lose this bad way at the wall. Yeah, so and if you don't, then you're such a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet dreams. You know you're telling yourself, well, my wife did it. Your father ain't gonna care. No, he's your wife ain't gonna know. No, your father is trying to seduce your wife. Yeah. Mm. The heck? May I present to you my son, Prince Magnus. What? That is a northern name that is not one of ours. Yes, he's named after his father. His father? Ragnar Lothbrok. Oh, come on. Uh -huh. Oops. I know what happened between you and it didn't, wouldn't child producing. <laughs> you sure? Nothing will stop him from returning to these shores, both for Magnus and for his settlement. We have destroyed his settlement. And he will return with vengeance upon you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He cannot help you, and you can't threaten us with him. <laughs> Gods. I will just kill you now. It would be unwise to kill us. It would give my father the very pretext he needs to invade Mercia. He may even have been prepared to sacrifice me to attain his ends. I suggest you sign the documents we have brought with us. You came in there with nothing and you're walking away with something, aren't you? That's his plan. Oh! We got some siege towers. Nice. How long did this take? Tomorrow, we attack Paris. <laughs> Damn, already. They've probably been there a while, but... They've just been there putting Paris under siege for a while, Pretty huh? Pretty much. Making sure they can't leave. Amazing how Christianity is pretty much the same everywhere you go, but it does have its differences. Yes. That sounds awesome. <laughs> We're ready to go. Rolo's certainly ready to go. <laughs> All right. And the sun rises on the last day for Paris. I just want you to know, I think that you attacking the city head on is a foolhardy move, and half of you are going to die. But Skull. Skull. But I mean, I think the people that are going to die are probably looking forward to it. At least on the Viking side. I mean, they'll be in Valhalla. Yeah, sure. But, uh... <laughs> but I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, most of them will be in Valhalla. Yeah. The Christians, on the other hand, who knows what's going to happen to them. But I think it's awesome that we're in Paris now. Yes. It's cool seeing what it looks like so far, because this I know Athelstan kind of made a little sandcastle with rocks mm -hmm. to kind of show it, but I still guess I expected something else, even though they showed that. But that, that's just from me knowing what it looks like now. What's well, amazing how much more advanced it is compared to everything else we've seen at this point. Oh, certainly. Because the Vikings just have their little wooden huts. Big and, marble walls and shit here. Yeah, they got, they have some solid walls. Everything is stone, even the buildings, even the you know, just regular buildings in town are stone. So they, they've got it made and they've got the, the fine clothing, they've got the gold jewelry, they got it all. I know, they're they're packing silks and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they got the fact that they can forge masks like that. Pretty advanced, you know? Yeah. Uh, for, you know, we're ninth century here. So the king, what what was the name of the king here for Paris? Do you remember? I don't think they ever said his name. But he's but his grandfather is Charlemagne, mm -hmm. and he's got two other brothers that are in different parts of the of the uh, kingdom as a whole, I guess. Right. Who he is unwilling to ask for aid, which I think is you know seriously stupid because it's like man, you you lose this and you've got real problems. <laughs> so. You do. At the same time, though, you have to wonder, will your brothers even come to your aid? If you're all competing to be Charlemagne's successor, what's to say that they're not just going to side with the Vikings against you? But like, hey, I'm under attack. Okay, great. I have some new allies to get rid of you. The Vikings would do it, too. Oh, especially yeah. for the wealth it would mean. They'd be like, we want Paris, you know? Unless you have all those all those French soldiers who have the inside knowledge of Paris and you know, know exactly where to attack, know what the people are like, what the weapons are like. That's, that'd be better than having Athelstan on your side. I didn't think about that. Yeah, of course, I haven't met his brothers, and I don't know what kind of guys they are, but mm -hmm. clearly there's, like, so far, at least among the Christian families I've seen, there's, like, no love between family members there. No, I mean, that's the thing. As much as we, we criticize, you know, all the kinslaying that goes on in the Viking culture, the Christians are doing just as much. Yeah, but you see it more so in the Christians here. I mean, they're probably slaying kin, of course, and yes... Rolo did betray Ragnar, mm -hmm. but they kind of came back into each other's, you know, brotherly loving ways there. But they're, they're also kind of the odd ones out, too, because everyone else, they just killed their relatives without a second thought. Fair. But, I mean, you know, look at Aethelwulf. Aethelwulf was telling Quinfrey, like, hey, my father probably expected me to die here for all I know. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> and he was fully accepting of that. Yeah. Which kind of makes me look at Aethelwulf in a different light. I'm like, then you shouldn't be doing anything your dad wants there. If I mean, he's willing to sacrifice you, his only living son, mm -hmm. no, that it's like, man, what kind of what kind of man does that? Well, he's clearly miserable because of what's happened between him and his wife, and also the fact that his father has been using him all this time. He probably uh, relishes the chance for a good death, but I don't know. Oh, good point. Yeah, but you can tell it's like the way he self-deprecates there. Mm -hmm. He is about to explode. Yeah. I'll say this for him. As much as I don't like him like Ragnar there, mm -hmm. he really is trying to hold on to his faith. He really is trying to stay true to some to, to whatever code he lives by there. And I see that when he self-deprecates because I guess that's just a way of him... It's part of partially a way of him reminding himself, you know, who you are, I guess. Right, but I feel like, too, though, that's, that's eating him up inside and making him a worse individual. Because like you said, he is one of those people who's bound to explode. I feel like he's going to end up just taking it out on random people. And being just a really bad leader. He's already done that. Well, yeah, we saw him, you know, when he attacked the Viking settlement. But, I mean, just like in general, like if he ever lets that come out, it's going to be miserable for everybody around him. Probably, especially if he abandons all strategy mm -hmm. and does like what the Vikings are about to do here and goes head first into things. Yeah. I'm like, no, that's a good way to get you and your men killed and leave everybody else vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're probably, you're right. But I think there's give and take there. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the uh, the plans that the Vikings are putting together here. I like your equipment, but and I feel like I see what Ragnar's doing here. But you know, but nonetheless, you brought your army. You still need these guys. Yeah, you know, you're about to sacrifice them all to make a point to Floki. Yeah, because even once you get past Paris, you have to deal with Egbert now because he did betray you. Yeah. So you got to have some kind of standing force to deal with that. Yeah. Let's look ahead in the future here. If you got a problem with Floki, deal with it. With him personally, don't sacrifice your people to make him make him look like he's stupid. So I'm curious, you know, you said you don't like their plan for attacking Paris. How would you go about it based on what you've seen? I want to see more Paris, and mm -hmm. there has to be another way in. There's got to be a cistern or like a sewer way that you can come up underneath them or something. If like your sewage can get out, then clearly you can get in kind of thing, you know? Who says they have a sewer system? Why wouldn't they? You saw how advanced this city was. You nothing. pointed it out yourself. You think they have a sewer system in Kattegat? Kattegat? You're comparing Kattegat to Paris. No. You even yourself said it's the most advanced city we've seen here. But I mean, the point we were making too, though, is these are no longer the Romans. They don't have the same technology. 
that the Romans had. Like, yes, we know the Romans had a sewer system, but this is not Rome. This is France, post-Rome, the end of the Dark Ages where a lot of the old Roman knowledge is gone. Do you think they actually built a sewer system? I don't know. We didn't see it. Now, bear in mind also, too, this is Europe pre-Black Death. So we know for a fact they still have a serious issue with disease around this period of time. And you think sewers would have prevented that from happening? Sewage would have prevented some of it, sure. Some of it, but I mean... I mean, it's not its not going to prevent everything of disease, especially like the Black Death, because there was a rat-oriented disease. But there are other things out there that, you know, that do stem from human waste, and we still see stuff happening like that well into like the 1700s, 1800s. No, I get what you're saying there, but what I do like is that they're using the advantages that they have. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Their ships being able to get where they are is a big advantage, and the fact that you're able to build siege equipment on them mm -hmm. is even better. Nonetheless, I don't think you should attack them. Start them out? Yeah. See, actually, I think it's a good idea. There's only so many ways to get into the city, especially because they are on water. So realistically, you could just wait them out and forge around. But then the other risk that you take is, you know, if they, if anybody ever does come to help them, then you're stuck between the city and the other army. But you'll know if somebody's coming to help. Maybe. And you can plan for that. I mean, you still have your ships, mm -hmm. so theoretically, if if you know that whatever force is coming to help, you can't do anything about, you have a fast, easy way out of there to get back where you're going. Now, granted, that's going to mean that the whole trip was for nothing, mm -hmm. but I still think that's the best, the best strategy you have going forward without losing a bunch of people. Keep them under siege, prevent anything from getting in or getting out for that matter. Mm -hmm. I know you can, and just go down that route. Yeah, I suppose there's uh, some legitimacy to that strategy, yeah. Of course, I want to see him attack him. <laughs> I say the show, said, the show would be kind of boring if it's just you know, five episodes of them besieging Paris. <laughs> but uh, but as you said, we got a strategy to think about here. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have word yet that Eckbert has betrayed him. At least I don't think he does. He hasn't mentioned anything about it. Well, Ragnar knows it. Nobody else does. Oh, you're right. Yeah, right, Ragnar. Yeah, he did. Yeah, nobody else knows about it. But he's got to take that in consideration too, because that was your whole thing. For, for three seasons. Yeah. Was getting land in England. Yeah. And that's still got to mean something to you. Come on, you can't just be looking at Paris as a nice, shiny new thing. Screw England now. I mean, you got to keep these guys alive so you can go back and get take what's yours. It might be one of those things, though, where it's necessary to placate the people. Because, you know, what did we see with Egbert? Well, he got rid of the Viking settlement because so many of his people were unhappy about there being pagans in his lands. You know, a lot of people... Besides Floki, I'm sure we're questioning Ragnar. Well, why are we going out here and farming when we're raiders? But maybe he has to go, okay, let's go do the most spectacular raid in human history. And then after that, let's go deal with my own personal stuff. Mm. And that's where I have a problem. Again, that's still where I have the problem. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, all right, don't put Floki in charge of this because this is just, you're going to get people needlessly killed. I know they're happy to do it, but still. Well, maybe it's just hope that Floki dies in the assault. Well, why kill everybody else in the end? <laughs> you got to make it look natural. I don't know. Well, I'm sorry, fam. I don't mean to take us in circles here, but that's where my head's at right now. Maybe it's psychology. Maybe he's playing games with Floki and trying to make him realize how much of a screw up he is. Mm, maybe. We'll find out. Yeah. I don't. I want to see where this goes. I'm. I'm spitballing and looking ahead here. I know. Yeah. But I really want to see kind of where this goes. What and who comes out victorious as a result? I say that's a heck of a cliffhanger. And I'm about to attack the city of Paris after the sun rises. So. That whole next episode's going to be nothing but a giant attack, isn't it? It should be. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that already. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Fam, I don't think we need to discuss anything else. I think you get the point there. I'm already looking forward to this next one for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens there when we get to that point. But as always, guys, if this is your first time with us, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications for every new video we drop. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. But until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Skull fam. Skull Dan. Skull Joe. Later, y'all.